Hi everybody, I'm Jo. If you don't know me, obviously you probably do because otherwise you wouldn't be here. And we are here to celebrate Simple Healing Food. Woo! -hoo! I don't have any party poppers or balloons or anything exciting like that, just myself and my cookbook, but that's exciting, right? <laughs> if you are there watching, feel free to pop a little message in the chat and say hi. Um, I am going to talk about the story behind the book. I'm going to talk about what we um, did to get this book happening. Um, a little bit about how to use the book, what's the, um, you know, the, the different things in the book that you may have not noticed yet, or some of you won't have the book yet. Hello to my sister and who was that at the start? Oh, Gretty, hello, oh, all you guys there. Thank you so much for coming along. It's so great to have you. Woohoo! My sister's saying hello five times. Stop it, Gillian. <laughs> um, Sabine's there. Hi, Sabine. Sabine's one of the lovely photographers for my book. Um, we've got Elise here as well on um, Zoom. <laughs> And yes, yeah, so many of you, it's lovely to see you. Well, I can't see you, but hey, there's my niece, hello. All right, so what I wanna start with first is a little bit of the background behind this book. Oh, first of all, actually, I should just say, how many of you have got your book and you're already into it and cooking? How many of you? Um, I know there's a lot of you still waiting for your book to be delivered and um, I'm hoping that it's with you soon. Hey Bianca, that's my neighbour. <laughs> this is fun. Um, and it's just so nice to see the feedback coming back from the recipes being made and um, I love seeing your photos on social media so tag me if you can. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for all your lovely feedback. All right, so if you have questions about the book or about something that I'm talking about, you may want to hold on to them till later in the, um, in the live video um, because what I'm going to do first is talk about the background of the book and the, the um, features of the book and how to use it. Um, I'm going to answer questions as I go, that, um, questions that I was sent um, I'll just put them into my talk as I go. So that may answer a lot of the questions that you have, but if there's anything I don't cover, feel free to ask it at the end. And um, so I have this great plan. <laughs> you know that you know that I um, make a lot of mistakes and I'm very real. So I'm just letting you know that I have this great plan of having Elise um, be added into the live and chat with me and then I realized that you can't actually do that on YouTube but I've already sent out the link. So she's going to be on Zoom on my laptop and I'm just gonna put the camera there and <laughs> she's gonna answer some questions and have a chat too. So we're just doing this the um, Joe in the kitchen way. Oh there's an echo. Okay is anyone else hearing an echo? Do you hear an echo, Elise? Oh, you know what? It could be... Let me just quickly check if it's my computer. Um, there we go. Is that... Hopefully there's no echo now. All right. We will continue on and hope for the best. All right, so a bit of a story behind the book. Most of you know the reason behind my um, gut health adventures. Um, but just in case any of you don't know the story, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview. So growing up, um, I did have a lot of health issues. Um, I was very underweight, um, always getting sick and colds and hay fever and all of that kind of thing. And as I got older, my health got worse. Um, I started to get the hormonal issues, the um, breakouts on my skin. Um, I got sick a lot and... It just seemed to escalate as I got older. I just got all sorts of um, things going on and uh, food intolerances and food reactions. And, um, and I felt like I spent my whole life trying to figure out what I could do to improve my health. But I got to the stage when I was in my early 20s where I thought, there's nothing I can really do. It's just who I am. It's my genetics. It's 
there's nothing that I can change. Um, I just have to live with it. Um, so, you know, I couldn't eat dairy, um, although I still did sometimes and just suffered. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't really, um, whenever I traveled, I'd get really sick. I'd get exhausted. I had a lot of trouble with um, my kids just started having all these health issues as well as they were growing and um, yeah, it just seemed to be getting worse and worse and worse and then suddenly we hit rock bottom when my son Isaac was 13 and um, was diagnosed with severe OCD and it was, oh, someone said that the video's frozen. Hopefully it's all good. You'll tell me if it's frozen, won't you, Elise? <laughs> Is it all right? Hopefully it's all good. No, nope? okay, it might be just your internet, whoever said that. All right, so um, yes, my son Isaac was diagnosed with severe OCD and anxiety and that sent me down the um, path of looking into gut health because I realized that, I mean, I'd heard a lot about how the gut and the brain are connected and if there's gut health issues, then um, there will often be me mental health issues and so I started researching that and learning about the importance of gut health and um, we decided to go like just right down the rabbit hole and do GAPS and I know GAPS is not for everyone but it was amazing for us. Um, GAPS if you don't know what it is um, is a basically a protocol, a nutritional protocol for healing through food, mostly through food. I mean, it also talks about lifestyle um, changes like, you know, the importance of sunlight and being outdoors and movement and drinking clean water and all of those kind of things as well. But the main focus is on healing traditional foods. Um, Isaac was at first so unwell that I was spoon feeding him, dressing him, just had to help him with everything at 13 years old. Um, he was on medication for his OCD and anxiety and I really didn't want that to be his life. Um, and I was a very determined, stubborn person saying no to the doctor, I'm not gonna let him do this forever. We are going to work this out. We're gonna figure out a natural way for him to heal. We're gonna work on his diet. And um, that's what we did. We worked really hard as a family on healing with food, um, following the principles of traditional gut healing um, protocols like GAPS. And within weeks, he was a different kid. Um, within less than a year, he was off medication. And that was um, seven years ago. And he hasn't been back on medication. Um, we all, you know, we all have ups and downs with our health. Just because you do a gut healing diet doesn't mean that you're forever cured and you will never have any health issues. And it also doesn't happen overnight. Um, it's a continual um, working on your health. But those principles that we learnt for gut healing have really laid the foundation for good health in our family now. And we've all um, improved and changed so much and those of you who've been following me for a long time have seen how I've healed um, you've seen the difference in my health and um, you've seen the difference in um, Isaac and probably the rest of the kids as well um, and it's been just an amazing journey um, for those of you who are wondering about my health with my food intolerances and my difficulty gaining weight and my um, low energy and getting sick all the time um, it just completely turned that around. And within a year, I could have any dairy. You know, I'm, I'm good with dairy now. I, that food intolerance was cured. Um, I have been able to, you know, travel. I've been able to um, gain weight, which now I've got to learn how to stop gaining. No. <laughs> uh, middle age, hey? Um, so it's been amazing. I've really found that we've learnt so much in the last six years, seven years. And, um, you know, sometimes Isaac has said to me, oh, mum, I'm so sorry for all that I've put you through. I'm like, no, thank goodness that I've got you because you are like such a great teacher. I have learnt so much through all this. And we just really want to share that with other people because we know that probably every family at some time or another goes through 
um, some kind of major health issues, whether it's food intolerances or allergies, whether it's mental health um, struggles like we had with the OCD and anxiety, um, whether it's things like eczema or, um, you know, there's so many things that um, generally families will go through something in their lifetime and we just love to be able to share our story of hope and say, you know what, there's so much that you can do that is simple, um, just so simple. There's so many things that are free that you can do to improve your health. You can, you know, get out in the morning sunlight, you can drink clean water, you can go for walks and start, um, you know, finding people to connect with and improve your community, you know, improve your um, connection with your community. All these things reduce stress and help you to heal and then bringing in healing foods. So in a little, in a little bit, I'll get Elise on to talk about some really simple, three really simple things that you can do to start improving your health and the health of your family. Um, but before we do that, I'll just go through some um, things in the book that I wanna show you and I'll get a couple of um, cooking demos started and then we'll get Elise in. All right, so um, with this book, as many of you know, my first book was Quirky Cooking. My second book was Life Changing Food, which you can see in the background over there on the bench. Thank you, Narelle. <laughs> um, and this is my third cookbook. Um, it's designed to be a sister book to Life Changing Food. So those of you who have Life Changing Food, you'll notice they look really lovely together. Ta -ta. <laughs> same size, hardcover, same amount of pages. Um, this book actually has over 140 recipes packed into it. And if you start including all the variations, you're gonna have even more. Um, so you'll notice with, um, okay, I'll just give you a little example of a recipe. Um, okay, lemon yogurt cake. A lot of you know this one from the website and I had to add it in because it's just such a favorite. Um, you'll see at the top of each recipe, there's the dietary categories and they cover, these recipes cover a lot of categories. Um, you'll see down here, so the main method, sorry, the main method is conventional. I think that's back to front, I'm sorry. <laughs> the main method is conventional so that, um, I've tried to make sure that this book is accessible for anyone, whether you have a Thermomix or not. Um, because the main focus is on healing food. Um, the Thermomix section is underneath. The Thermomix notes for those of you who have a Thermomix. If, this, if the recipe is suitable for Thermomix, I've got it underneath there. And then at the bottom, there's the variations. And sometimes you'll see, oh, thank you guys. Sometimes you'll see like um, six variations or three or five. And so there's things like, um, a variation for dairy-free, a variation for nut-free, um, a variation for making the cake into cupcakes. Um, some of them will have, um, like if it's a main meal, it'll have ideas for different vegetables to use or um, how to cook it in a different way. So instead of on the stove top or thermix, maybe you want to use a slow cooker or cook it in the oven. Um, so it's got all of that kind of thing. And then it's got serving suggestions and storage. So I often get questions of how long does this um, dish last in the fridge or can I freeze it you'll be able to find out all of that in the storage section so there's a lot of information on each recipe um, and then there's a really good index at the back so you can find out you know all the chicken recipes including um, recipes that have chicken in the variations or all the tomato recipes and ones that have tomatoes in the variations um, so you can find that kind of thing in the index. You'll also find in the, I'll just quickly go to the front of the book. In the front of the book, there's a section called the healthy kitchen. Um, and there's a whole page on cooking on a budget, healthy eating on a budget. And I know that this is a, a you know, a, a subject that a lot of us are concerned about because when you start eating a healthy diet, sometimes it feels like um, you know, you're spending a lot of money on maybe meat and produce that you didn't spend before. But this section helps you to understand um, 
you know, the value of the food you buy, but also ways to save money. And then there's a section on bulk food prep and storage, because that's another concern, which is how do I find time to cook all this from scratch myself? Um, so batch cooking is a lifesaver. Have a look at that page um, and also bulk storage. So if you're buying um, food in bulk, you need to store it well so that it doesn't go to waste. Um, and there's also a whole page on meal planning. So if you're new to meal planning, um, it's a game changer. Um, just have a read of that page. Even if you feel like, ah, oh, I can't be bothered planning, I'm not a planner. There's some really good tips that you might find helpful there. Um, and then at the front of the book is the gut health section, which we'll talk about in a minute with Elise. You'll notice the book is divided into chapters um, of main ingredient. So we've got the basics and then we've got vegetables, um, then we've got eggs, um, and then the different meats. So I've divided it into meat sections just because if you've got some, um, you know, you've got some beef mints in the fridge and you go, oh, I need to use that up. Just go to the beef section, have a look there. Um, if you've got some chicken and you want to figure out what to do with that, you can go there, but also you can look in the index in the back. Um, so I've divided it into those chapters as well as baking, desserts, snacks, because I find when I'm meal planning, I like to set out um, for the week what I'm going to have as the main ingredient for each meal. For instance, I might say, okay, um, Monday we're going to have some fish and so I, I look in my recipes for a fish recipe. Or I might say on Wednesday we've got um, chicken, so that's the day to look for, you know, and I look through for a chicken recipe. And so I arrange my week so that we're doing vegetable recipes in between the meat recipes. We've got some seafood in there. We've got an egg recipe, which generally is a good budget recipe. Um, and that's part of how I meal plan. So that's why I arranged the book that way. You'll also see that in the front of the book, um, in the serious section, I call it, Elisa's serious gut health section. No, it's, it's very easy to read, but there is um, a lot of information in there. And if you want to read more or you're unsure of why something um, is you know, mentioned in there, you can look at the references as well. And there's a reference section in the back. And so you can go to, um, go to that section and find extra reading on things like statistics for how food affects health, um, statistics about, um, for instance, um, statistics about obesity or heart disease or how food affects that. Um, there's, there's studies on the effects of modern living and stress on gut health. So you can go in that section and have a look for further reading um, if you're interested in a topic. Okay, so I think um, some of the questions that I've had throughout the last few um, the last few couple of months, um, the main question I get is probably, can I buy this book overseas? <laughs> so if you are overseas watching this, we are working on getting distributors in other countries. Because I self-published, um, it's trickier than if you um, are published through a um, publisher. So I'm just still working on that, but we do aim to have it for sale in other countries. So it cu cuts down on the cost of shipping because we can, we can definitely ship from here, but it's very expensive to ship overseas. Um, Another question that we get is, will there be an app or a digital version? Oh, yay, Denise got her book in the UK. Woohoo! Hope you're enjoying it, Denise. Um, I often get asked if there's going to be an app or a digital version or a PDF of like a ebook. We will work on a digital version, but we're not really sure exactly um, when that will be and what form that will take. I'm a little bit hesitant to do an app again because it's so much work. Um, it's a lot of work to get it done and it's also ongoing work because every time your phone updates, um, you've got to update the app. So it's a lot more work than having an ebook, but we'll 
let you know when we know. <laughs> um, so yeah, there will be a digital version eventually, but we're not sure when. Okay, so what I might do, oh yes, I was gonna talk about the, um, say thank you to everybody who helped with the book. Um, great big thank you to Elise. She was very patient with my constant questions <laughs> of, do you think this ingredient would be okay? Or have I, I ha have I worded this right? Does it make sense? Or is the science right here? And then she wrote that whole big section for the front of the book and it's really, really amazing. I've had people say they've sat down and read her section of the book with a notepad so that they could study it and just write notes. So thank you, Elise. <laughs> um, also, if, if you don't know Elise, she is an integrative nutritionist and GAPS practitioner, um, and she'll, we'll introduce her in a minute. Um, also a big thank you to Daniel New, who is the designer for the book. He also designed Life Changing Food, and he is an amazing award-winning designer who's really designed some beautiful books for famous chefs and all sorts of people. And he doesn't mind also designing for me. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Um, then there's also Louisa Brimble, who's an award-winning photographer who I absolutely adore. And she has also done photography for my last book. Um, and Sabine Bernard, who is um, an amazing friend now who has become um, such a special person in our lives and she did her and Louisa did about half the photography each um, It was a bit of a crazy journey Putting a book together during COVID um, I should probably tell you this story So we started the photo shoot for the book in early. I think it was early 2000 and What year are we 22 21 20? I think it was early 20 was it? Um, and we went down to Sydney and had the first photo shoot with Louisa, um, actually at the home of the Graham, what's his name? The Better Homes and Gardens guy. <laughs> um, he's a friend of Louisa's and, and he let us use his beautiful garden. So um, we had the first photo shoot there for a few days. And then basically the photo shoot got divided up into about five shoots because it's a lot of work. And um, suddenly COVID hit and we were all locked down and I couldn't get out of Queensland. So we had, um, we had two photo shoots up here with Sabine. So she lives in Queensland and she came up and did some for us. And then Louisa was gonna do some more for me with um, part of our team who live in New South Wales and Elise helping out and Mel, Elise's assistant. And um, we did that photo shoot long distance. So I was on FaceTime on the laptop watching them work. And they would pick up a dish and say, is this, is this right? Does this look good? And I'd approve it or say, no, can you do such and such? And then they'd take the laptop with them outside and do the photos and I'd be saying, oh, can you arrange it? Like, <laughs> it was the funniest thing. So um, this has been quite an adventure, this book. We had. Uh, a long distance photo shoot. We had, you know, COVID. Yes, Graham Ross, thank you. Um, we had so much craziness, but we managed and we got it done. And basically it's been about four years in the making. Um, kind of longer, really. I mean, it's a lifetime really, isn't it? But the recipes, I, some of them are from my original gut health program, which um, I developed six months into our gut healing journey. Um, that was started about six years ago. Um, so though, some of those recipes are from the program. Oh, thank you, Sabine. <laughs> um, and some of them were made especially for the book and some were from the blog. And so, yeah, it's nice to have them all in one place though, isn't it? All right, I feel like I'm chatting too much, but um, hopefully you can, you're putting up with me. All right, so what we might do is go ahead and make some make a couple of recipes and I'll answer questions as I go. I, when I'm looking down, I can't see your questions popping up. So if I miss something, um, maybe just wait um, until the end to ask more questions and I will make sure that I don't miss any that way. All right, so what we're gonna do is, first of all, make some macadamia cheese. 
So I'm gonna just aim this over here. Hi, Emma. My lovely, oh, and that's who I also need to thank. Oops, I didn't finish thanking people. Oh, I keep, <laughs> keep forgetting who I'm gonna thank. My assistants, Emma and Magda and B. Um, thank you for all your hard work as well. And um, I feel like there was so many people that helped us with the photo shoots. I can't even name them all, but we had so many friends just turn up and help with the cooking and the photos. And um, it was just amazing. It's been, and then all my family as well, my sister, Joy, um, my nephew, Callum, who's an amazing cook, my mum, they all helped here with the photo shoot as well. India, my daughter. Um, so it was very much family, friends, everybody pitching in and making this book happen. So it was very much a team effort and thank you so much, guys. All right, macadamia cheese. Now, if you've never had macadamia cheese and you are a dairy lover, just try it because it's so good. So this recipe for stuffed mushrooms here, um, I'm sending this to you after the live video. Um, it is really, really delicious. We like this one for a um, side dish with a meal or even as a meal on its own with some salad. Um, yeah, the, the nut cheeses, there's something about that crunchiness as well as the creaminess with macadamias. And in this recipe, you'll see, if you can, there's two fillings. There's a macadamia cheese or a parmesan herb filling. You can make both of them and that the two fillings will um, fill six large portobello mushrooms. So half and half. Um, or if you want all macadamia cheese, just double that section of the recipe. Or if you want all the parmesan herb filling, then you just double that part of the recipe. So basically each one of these fills about three large mushrooms, three or four. I like a lot of filling. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just put the macadamias, I usually use whole macadamias, but um, the bits are cheaper, so I just bought those. <laughs> All right, so we've got those. Now, um, usually I use savory yeast flakes or nutrition of, nutritional yeast flakes, can you see that in this one? But if you want to, you can use Parmesan. If you don't have any problem with dairy, you can use two tablespoons of Parmesan instead of the yeast flakes, so either one. I'm actually gonna use a bit of both because I can't help myself. I never make one recipe the same way twice <laughs> because I actually ran out of nutritional yeast flakes and I went to the local health food store to buy some today and there was none left. So, you know, I'm just doing, you guys know me well enough to know that I'm always tweaking recipes and it's, it's a good thing to know that you don't have to be scared to play with your food. I know your mum told you not to, but I say you can. All right. <laughs> and we're also going to add some, all right, first of all, we'll do the macadamias, yeast flakes, and we need, a, I've added a bit of parmesan and a bit of salt. So I'm just gonna do about half a teaspoon. I always measure very carefully. <laughs> so that's sea salt. Yes, on gaps you can have yeast flakes um, and Elise can explain that later. <laughs> All right, there's a lemon somewhere which I forgot to juice. Let me just find it. All right. Uh, Sorry, I'm, I thought I was prepared, but I forgot the lemon. All right, we only need one tablespoon, so that's easy. I won't do my lemon juice trick this time. Yes, use what you have on hand. I wasn't about to drive for half an hour to go get more yeast flakes, so I just, oh well, use a bit of Parmesan. Okay, that lemon juice is to taste. If you want it more lemony, go ahead and add more. All good. All right, so we're just gonna chop that up. Now, if you're using a Thermomix, it's basically about five seconds on speed five. Um, actually, I'm just gonna, do you know what? I realized because I, <laughs> I'm tweaking things again, because I have um, little bits, I'm gonna add the parsley at the start. So there we go. Parsley is optional. 
If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. Alright, I'm just going to scrape that down and I'll show you what that looks like. Can you see that? That's quite chunky still. So you can go a little finer if you want to. I might go a tiny bit more. You do want a bit of texture though, so don't go crazy. All right, move all this parsley out of the way. Let's grab it. So you just grab the mushrooms, take the stem out. <laughs> it just went everywhere. Oh, never mind. Clean that up later. Okay. And I'm just going to use three for this amount of filling, I think. All right. So there's the, I'll, I'll just aim this down a bit lower. Now, what I'm going to do is show you this. So it's just, um, it's, it's a little bit crumbly, but when you press it, it kind of just sticks in. Let's see. I should have tasted that first, but I'm trusting my, um, I'm trusting my recipe, which I didn't follow. I did. I just tweaked it. All right, so we'll just fill those up. Oh, I forgot to turn the oven on, excuse me. Okay. This is why, you know, when you're doing something online, you should have someone here to help you with the technical things, and then you can focus on the cooking, but, oh well, it's a one-man show. <laughs> Flying mushroom stem, yep. I aim to please, all right. This is a very large mushroom, so it's going to barely fit three. Let's see how we go. So, um, I know some of you were wondering whether um, this book will suit your particular diet. So I'm going to go through in a minute and explain um, a few of the different diets that it's suitable for because there's a lot. All right. Now, I just recommend when you're making these, scrumble it up a little bit, crumble it, you know, don't press it really firmly in there because you like, it's really nice to get the little browned bits. Um, so don't press it in. Just let it be a little bit loose on top like that. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that into the oven. Actually, I should probably wait because I just turned the oven on. Scrumble's a good word. My sister's laughing at me. Okay, I'm just going to pop this over here and we'll make the next I'm going to show you the rustic fruit tart. Um, first of all, to save time because we're only, <laughs> yes sisters, um, we're only supposed to be about an hour or so on this live. It could go longer, but I thought I'll save time and make the fruit ahead of time. So this is the roasted fruit. You can use berries or stone fruit. Um, those are the probably my favorites. You can use other things like mango and things like that, but they're very um, juicy. 
Sometimes you'll have stone fruit that's a little bit dry and you'll need to sprinkle it with water. Um, and basically you just drizzle it with a little bit of honey, add some vanilla and then pop it in the oven for about half an hour and you get this beautiful jammy roasted fruit. And then that can be used on yogurt or with custard. Yes, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> um, and you can use that as a, a pie filling. Um, we eat it mostly with yogurt. It's just so delicious for breakfast or a snack. Um, but yeah, also great in pies. So I'm gonna show you how to make the almond meal pastry, which is super simple. And then we'll fill it with the fruit. All right, move this book out of the way so I don't get everything on it. Okay. Sorry, I just gotta get the... All right, I have this little trick. I um, keep the almond meal in the freezer or fridge. Can't see that. Um, so that's blanched almond meal, the one without the skins. Um, you'll get a nicer texture if you use that. If you use whole almond meal, it will be a little bit crumbly and it will be brown. So if you want more of a traditional looking pastry, use blanched almond meal. It's also a little bit easier to digest because it doesn't have the skins and the skins contain the highest um, concentration of phytates, which are the anti-nutrients in nuts. So they're a little bit, you know, they're a little bit, um, more difficult to digest whole almonds. So if you keep it in the fridge or freezer, when you go to make your pastry, it's already cold, you don't need to chill it. So I've got 300 grams of almond meal here. This pastry I'm gonna use a bit, uh, no, it's not the same as almond flour. So almond flour is drier. Almond flour has, um, I think, I'm not sure how they make it, but it's a little bit more fibrous. Um, and it'll give you a finer result, but it needs a little bit more liquid. So um, if you use the almond meal, um, that's what I've used in my recipe. I'm just gonna grab a spatula. All right, so this is 60 grams of butter. Um, if you're using salted butter, you don't really need to add any salt. If it's unsalted butter, just add a pinch of salt. Otherwise your pastry will taste really bland. I don't, I used to add a little bit of honey if I was doing a sweet pastry. I don't anymore. I find you don't really need it if you've got the um, sweetness in the um, filling. Two eggs. Okay, and that's it. So. Um, that butter had salt in it, so I'm not going to worry about adding any salt. I'm going to mix that up. some of that out to show you so there you go this oh, I'm sorry it's really hard to get the light right at night um, so that is how easy it is to make almond meal pastry Ta -da! if you can't have egg don't worry you can do the chia version so if you look in the recipe in the book and it will be in your emails um, it's just chia seeds and water instead of the egg and it works perfectly as well you can also use coconut oil instead of the butter, but I find you need to use a little bit less if you're using coconut oil because it seems to be more oily than butter. All right, so I'm gonna roll that out. And I'll, I'll try and get this. Um, I didn't make the almond meal, no, because I find it's just easier to buy blanched almond meal in bulk um, rather than make it because if you make it it takes forever <laughs> basically ain't nobody got time for that right. now we're going to 
roll this out and just make a really rustic tart. This is a this is a recipe that I like making when I've got visitors coming unexpectedly. Um, can you actually see what I'm doing? Hopefully, not quite. Okay, let's see if we can go down a notch. There we go. Okay, that's better. Sorry, I'm just gonna have to get another piece of baking paper. Because it's best to roll it between two sheets. So that it doesn't stick. But yeah, if you're, if you're not used to working with pastry and you find it all a bit scary, honestly, almond meal pastry is like the easiest there is. You can't, you can't ruin it. If you can't have nuts, you can make, you can make this with either pepitas or sunflower seeds. Just be aware that with um, pepitas, it will be kind of a grayish green color. <laughs> so it's not beautiful, but it tastes really good. And when you bake it, it browns enough that you lose that really odd color and it's, it's delicious. All right. You will probably find that you don't need quite all of this for this recipe. I'll see how I go. You wanna roll it out to about, hmm, about three to five mils thick. do. There we go. Now we'll just spoon that in. If you find you've got a lot of juice in your fruit, just kind of strain it out a bit so that it's not too sloppy. Um, sorry, I just missed that question. I'll have to come back if it was a question. So I love this time of year when you can get all the stone fruit. You can just, I just, every few days I'm roasting more of it because I use it so much when it's this time of year. Got to make the most of it while you can. So if you can buy bulk stone fruit or bulk berries, you can go ahead and roast heaps of it and pop it in the freezer in containers. All right, so I've left the, the really juicy bit in there. We'll use that on some yogurt. So that'll be fine. All right, I'm just gonna wash my hands. Now, this is the part where it's actually really easy. So you just use your paper to help you bend it over and just gently go like that. The shadow come to say hello. <laughs> He's already had dinner, don't worry. But can you see how I'm just sort of, and don't worry if it busts a bit, it's rustic. If anybody complains, you tell them it's meant to be like that. Okay? <laughs> All right, so there we go. Nice and rustic. And you leave a little hole in the middle. And then we just need um, to brush that, if I can find the, I also forgot to get milk, so I'll just grab that. You can use any um, milk, you can do nut milk or coconut milk or dairy milk. Um, oh, that was, I just got the cream on top, whoopsie. Oh well, we're having cream. This is our local organic um, dairy, Mangali. I live not far from there. And just brush the top of it. I find with milk you get a beautiful golden top. You can use egg, whisked egg. Um, and you can even use like melted butter. This will be like melted butter because it's pretty much cream I've got here. Oh well, I'm sure it'll be yummy. If you have sweet a sweet tooth and you feel like that's not sweet enough because I haven't really used a lot of honey in that fruit, just a couple of teaspoons. Um, you can sprinkle that with some coconut sugar, but I find, you know, if you're really used to sweet things, 
It doesn't really take that long to change your taste buds. If you start eating really nourishing, um, low sweet, low sweet level <laughs> um, foods, you start to get the taste for it and then you get used to it pretty quickly. But I do remember back when we first started eating healthily, um, I did put more sweetener in things. So I understand when you're just starting, sometimes you may have to tweak my recipes because they're not as sweet. And then if you're you know, doing keto or something like that, you may have to change it to suit you so that it's less sweet. So sweeteners are something that you can definitely adjust in a recipe and you don't have to have it exactly like I've got it. All right, so there we go. We've got that tucked in, ready to go into the oven. All right, so I'll pop that and the mushrooms in the oven because they both take about 20 to 25 minutes. to get it all back where it should be. Now, I'm just going to answer a couple more questions that I had um, sent to me, and then we will grab Elise and get her to have a chat. Let's pop this milk back in the fridge. Okay. Hope you saw how easy that was to make so yeah when I've got visitors coming up <laughs> I can't seem to get this right when I've got visitors coming over sometimes that's just the quickest thing to make um, so yeah all right thanks for answering each other's questions on there I see that you're helping each other out with where to buy things that's great awesome okay so some of the info that I wanted to make sure that you understood for the book and that I've been asked a lot of times. Um, I've been asked, how does this book differ from my other cookbooks? Um, so life-changing food, well, first of all, quirky cooking was whole food, but it still included a little bit of gluten. So it had some spelt in there, um, maybe a bit more sweeteners and things. It was sort of earlier in my journey, um, very, family friendly meals um, and definitely the sort of thing that you could um, really enjoy if you have a Thermomix. It's a Thermomix cookbook. Life Changing Food is um, sort of the next step on our journey. Whole food, gluten free, mostly grain free. I think it, it's probably all grain free. I, I keep, yeah, it is grain free. Um, and it's sort of a introduction to gut health and um, healing with food. And then simple healing food is a deeper dive into gut health and healing with food. So you can see the progression there that we've gone on. Um, if you're not sure which one to buy first, it really depends where you're at. If you, if you just want to eat whole foods and you want Thermomix recipes, maybe the first one's good for you. Um, they all have Thermomix methods though. The second two also have the conventional methods. Simple Healing Food is the one that covers the biggest range of diets. So all the recipes are grain-free, gluten-free, refined sugar-free. Um, they're mostly dairy-free or have a variation for dairy-free. Um, there's a lot that have egg-free variations. If you can't have eggs, let me just check. I did count a lot of these recipes because people asked me so many times. There's 109 recipes in the cookbook that don't have eggs or have an egg-free variation. So that's pretty good out of 140. There's a lot of egg free recipes. Um, if you're not able to cope with nuts and seeds, that's okay because most of the mains don't have any nuts or seeds. They're very basic meat and veg type recipes. Um, 
a lot of the baking does have nuts or seeds, but there's 100 recipes out of 140 that don't have nuts or seeds. So there's quite a few there. Um, if you're allergic to nightshades or can't have tomatoes, the focus is very much on healing the gut. And in early gut healing diets, you don't really have the nightshades and tomatoes. So there's actually only three recipes in the whole book that absolutely need tomatoes. Most of the recipes don't have tomatoes or they have a variation to swap them out. Um, if you have fructose intolerance or you're on a low FODMAPS diet, um, it's really vital to work on your gut health to be able to expand your diet again. Um, and Elise talks about that a lot, which um, she talks about having those healing foods, just slowly adding them in. But while you're healing, if you can't handle um, fructose, there is um, variations on a lot of the recipes for um, a low fructose, low FODMAPS kind of um, variation. Um, and there's also a lot of recipes suitable for keto or low carb in the book. Over half the recipes are suitable for the keto diet. Um, and, and a lot of them could be tweaked to be suitable, like just changing the sweeteners. I don't use any chemical sweeteners. I don't use erythritol or xylitol um, as they're not whole foods. Um, so I use honey, but you could really reduce the honey and add a bit of green stevia powder or yeah. So have a play with those. Um, the life-changing food and simple healing food are completely different books. Someone asked if it, if it was, I think that's what you asked. Sorry, my, the, the um, questions pop up and then they disappear. So I have to be quick. Um, so they go together like a set. Some of the basics will be the same because I've also made the book so that they can stand alone. Um, and so you need the basics in there, like no mato sauce or ghee or something like that. Um, but they're definitely two separate books. Um, sorry, I, I, yeah, I missed that other question, but I'll check later. Um, and if you're not really an experienced cook, oh, okay, it was about the app. Yes, the app is exactly the same as Life Changing Food. It's the digital version of Life Changing Food. Um, if you're new to gut healing and um, cooking for healthy eating or you're not a confident cook, Simple Healing Food is a really good book for you because I designed the book in, with my own children in mind because they're all at that age where they're growing up, they're cooking, they're leaving home and I wanted them to have a cookbook that they could take with them that was very simple, um, very nourishing, not overwhelming. So it's, that's the um, audience I've aimed at is my kids. Isaac, come say hello. Right. Look, here's How's Isaac. That timing, eh? <laughs> you have to bend down because yeah. I've got the camera the wrong size. No, that's or, all right. or you're tall. 381 people. Wow. Well done. <laughs> um, this is Isaac, my little Isaac. Come here, Sim. Come say no, hello no, too. <laughs> <laughs> the others don't want to say hello. Um, but Isaac's always brave. No, I'll say hello just from over here. No. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> Has anyone got a question for Isaac? I'll put it up there. Just putting it out there. I got my book for free. Oh, <laughs> bragger. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's um, it's good. <laughs> it's it's a great book for anyone who's um just starting. Hey, Annie Jill. Sorry. Oh, look, there's Annie Jill. It's a really good book for anyone who's just starting on this journey, but it's also great for, you know, your kids when they're leaving home. And um, Isaac's favourite recipe is... Oh, mate. Oh, I've got to think about chicken that. Oh, chicken provencal is the one I cook the most. <laughs> um, so it has oh. got to be in, in life change. Oh, in Simple Simple yeah. Okay, well then, I suppose that one, because I haven't had an extensive book He cooks it, it probably... Yes, yes I did. did get it signed. Yes, of course. I had to. Um, Isaac cooks the chicken provencal hey, every week, don't you? Probably every week or every two weeks, yes. Oh, come it's on. It's just hey. easy. Yeah. So it's the one where you just like chicken pieces, tin of tomatoes, sliced garlic. There's a, herbs, there's a couple of questions that I've missed. Oil. Sorry, guys. Um, How do you go with your diet when you're with friends who eat different food? Can oh, I be adopted? <laughs> I just, I just um, have, I don't know, I guess I have, I'm blessed to have friends that don't judge me too much on it. 
Um, I just, I don't know. They get what they want or they eat what they want and I eat what I want. Emma, how did you get your hair so perfect? Um, I cut it. I don't, yeah, mum cut it about, about, about um, four weeks ago and I haven't put any, anything in it. I had a shower before I came in. And He's just, got thick hair, yeah. unlike me. Anyway. All right, um, I made the passion fruit bowl the other day. Oh, awesome. Pork and veggies and beans. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I should get Elise on here because she probably needs to get Bye -bye. her son to bed. So I might just pop over here. Actually, Isaac, come here and help me for a sec. Okay, this is my very dodgy technical um, answer for what I, because I made a mistake with the link. And now this is how you see Elise. <laughs> All right, hang on, I'll just get this ready. And Dylan. <laughs> and Dylan. All right, we're going to turn on the sound and is your sound on, Elise? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, I'll turn it up and I'll, I'll bring them closer to you. Hello. Hello. All right, so now you see Elise and her son. This is Dylan. And Elise is going to have a chat about Elise is going to have a chat. These are the hands that were cutting up the marshmallows. Yes. In the, you know, <laughs> in the book, if you see the... On page 214, <laughs> these hands. These Dylan's very proud of these, of these marshmallows. Yay, Dylan. Um, someone asked about... <laughs> sorry, <laughs> someone... Big tacos, fish tacos on another page as well. Oh, yes, yes. He, lo he loved those tacos, didn't he? All right. Um, Elise, can you just share with us a little bit about why gut health is so important? Okay. Well, let's share a little bit about it. How long do we have, Joe? Yeah, oh, well, see how you go. <laughs> so for those just starting out, um, oh, gut health is so important because it is the root of our health. So it affects every every other system in our body, every organ in our body affects every aspect of our health. So when it comes to buying beautiful whole foods and feeding them to your family, it's not just a matter of what goes in is what you're then absorbing. If your gut is not in a good state, then you're not actually going to absorb those foods. We'll just turn that off, on. Um, so you're not actually absorbing the nutrients. So it's not a matter of you are what you eat. It's a matter that you are what your gut can actually absorb and what you can assimilate. Um, and also the fact that if your gut is out of balance, it becomes a source of toxicity rather than a source of nourishment. So if our microbiome is out of balance, then it's, there's toxicity being produced. We have too many bacteria, bacteria in there that are producing toxins. And if our gut is leaky, then it's allowing things through into our blood in a way our body doesn't recognize as food and it starts having an immune response to that. Um, so basically, <clears throat> our gut is meant to be our primary source of nourishment. And if we're not taking care of it, it really becomes a source of toxicity. And everything we put in our body, our gut is a barrier. Like our gut lining is like a barrier between what we're putting in and our blood. Um, and it's the way we get all of those nutrients. So we rely on our microbiome to be able to break down and absorb those nutrients from the food as well. So there's a lot going on in there. And then there's a whole gut brain connection as well. So um, that's that connection with um, mental health issues, sensory issues, um, learning difficulties. So when we think about gut issues, we often just think about like digestive symptoms and digestive complaints, um, irritable bowel disease and things like that. Um, but there's that gut brain connection. So I'm sure you guys have heard about that one. Um, and so it's very important that we're taking care of our guts. Um, and in the book, in the section that you wrote you talk about three really simple steps that you can take to start working on your gut health could you just go over that with us yes i can i wrote <laughs> this but i like to have it in front of me still <laughs> um so it's really just principles that i like to follow and anyone that 
does follow me on social media. And if you don't, I'm at Elise Nutritionist, E-L-Y-S-E, at Elise Nutritionist. See if I can get some more followers, Joe. Get me on the <laughs> Do a little plug. Um, I like to take a really simple approach because that's what we have to do. So um, we can get very, very stuck in that whole diet starts Monday approach and want to overhaul everything at once. And anyone who's tried that, which I'm sure you all have, we've all tried some kind of diet or or something like that. It's generally not sustainable and it doesn't last and it's difficult to implement. It's difficult to keep going with. It takes a lot of habit change and we just try and jump too far into it um, and make massive changes without thinking about the steps that we're taking. So I like to take a really simple approach where we take things one step at a time. So with our clients at the Well Belly Health Clinic, um, sometimes starting with this approach can be really confronting and they can actually find it challenging because we're used to that, well, I'm either on the diet or I'm off the diet. Like if I'm trying to eat healthy and then I eat something that I consider not to be healthy, then I've ruined it and I've just got to start again. Um, so it really doesn't work like that. So we want to look at it more like taking things one step at a time. So that's the first the first step I put in the book. So taking things one step at a time. So scrapping that diet starts Monday approach. And that one step may be looking at it like one meal at a time. And this is what we often do with clients in the clinic. And it's also what Joe and I do in the Gut Health Formula, which is our online program, which is coming up. So we have February the 11th. February, anyone that's interested, the Gut Health Formula is a fantastic program because it really encompasses all of these principles. So taking it one step at a time, um, not looking at that diet start, starts Monday approach, you may just start with one meal of the day. So that's what we do in the Gut Health Formula. We start first with breakfast and we just look at how can we boost breakfast? So you may go through the recipe book and look at how can I first just start with changing breakfast? Um, what are some breakfast ideas in here? In here, And you might just start there rather than when you look at it like, well, I'm going to go keto because I heard keto is really good and all my friends are doing it and I saw so many people on Instagram doing it. Um, so that's what I need to be doing. And then you try Diet Starts Monday approach and it becomes very overwhelming very quickly because you're thinking so hard about every meal you need to eat and then, oh my gosh, I ate a sweet potato and now I've ruined it <laughs> and now I need to start again next Monday. So we don't want to do it like that. So you could just start looking at, um, I, I want to eat more whole foods. So rather than clearing out my pantry, I'm just going to take it one step at a time. Look at breakfast. How can I add more whole foods in there? And how can I switch it to more of a whole food diet? Um, starting with breakfast, and then you may look at some snacks, and then you may move on to lunches or dinners and start doing it like that. So this is a really foolproof approach when you start working on it like that. And it's much easier and less stressful. And you'll see in the um, gut health section that I wrote in the book, I do talk quite a bit about stress in there because that's an important subject. So the second point is to focus on what you can have. So rather than looking, focusing just on what you can't have. So when you try, say if you're like trying to cut out sugar and you're like, I'm not going to eat any more chocolate. And so you decide not to eat chocolate and it's Monday, so it's a great day to start. Um, and you get to the end of Tuesday and <laughs> you go down to the shop and you buy a bucket of chocolate biscuits and you eat a whole lot. Because when you're really focused on the thing that you're cutting out, what do you tend to think about? You tend to think more about the thing that you have been cutting out and then you want that thing. So rather than focusing on removing things, which puts us in that deprivation mindset, that going without, um, we want to just focus on what you can have. So when you focus on what you can have, then you end up crowding out the things that you are not wanting to have. So if you're taking it one step at a time and focusing on what you can have uh, or what you're wanting to have, then you may start with changing breakfast and making that feel really good. And that might take a week or so until you get that down pat. And then you move on to the next meal, focusing on what you can have and what you're adding in. And before you know it, um, you changed your whole diet and it's all feeling amazing and it was easy and it wasn't a diet starts Monday approach and feeling like you're going without and missing out on something. So really good way to do it. And the third point is to be a detective, not a disciplinarian. So if you do eat something that's not on your list of what I really want to be eating right now, we're not calling it good or bad food. We're just deciding what we do and don't want to be eating. Um, so if you are going to sit down and you've decided I really want chocolate biscuits 
and you're going to have them, enjoy them. Have them and enjoy them is my first rule. And be a detective, not a disciplinarian. So that looks at like, okay, chocolate biscuits weren't on my list of foods I want to be having right now. Why did I feel like I needed them? Hmm, maybe I didn't eat enough breakfast. Um, then I went out for the day and I didn't take anything with me. And then I started to get hungry in the afternoon. Um, and so that's probably why that happened. Or something stressful happened. And then I just felt like a really, you know, a bit of stress eating. So it's being a detective, not a disciplinarian, being really kind to yourself and figuring things out. Because the thing is that our bodies are very, very smart. And what's going on in our bodies and if there are cravings and things like that happening, it's our body telling us something. So if we're a detective, then we can start figuring it out. So if you crave sugar a lot, um, lots of people have that issue with um, sugar cravings, then there is something else going on because um, what's going on in our gut drives so much of our eating behaviours. So if you've got an imbalance of gut bacteria, then they can send hormone-like signals to the brain that actually cause you to crave foods like sugar. So next time you do eat... Sounds like we've got a crazy driver out in the street. Um, so next time you do eat a, pa a packet of chocolate biscuits, you can just blame it on your gut bacteria. Like, it's not my fault that they told me to do it. Because uh, that's actually what's happening. So I like to really build that relationship with your body where you're starting to look at its intelligence... Um, and that it's not about willpower. So we really want to take that whole factor of willpower out of there. And it's really not about that. It's about figuring out what's going on. So be a detective, not a disciplinarian. Love it. And that's my three tips. That's very helpful. Did you guys have a few questions for Elise? Because I saw a few coming through. I saw, I saw one early on. Oh, my mum says hi too. She's like, I don't know how to comment. It's Aww. so hard that I'm here. <laughs> Hello, so mum. <laughs> and if you look on page 162, that's a recipe based on my mum's paprika lamb shanks. Oh my goodness, the paprika lamb shanks, you have to try them. Thank you, Elise's mum. They're very, very good. <laughs> so um, earlier on, someone asked the question, is nutritional yeast okay on GAPS? Which it is. Yeah. Yes. It just You need to get one that is not fortified. Um, so fortified is when they actually add B vitamins into it. Um, so you want one that's not being fortified. Also, someone asked, is it suitable to do this kind of diet for Crohn's disease? Absolutely. So when you have something going on like that, you best to work with a practitioner because there will be things that will need adjusting or um, you're just making sure that you're doing things that are specifically right for you. Um, but yes, absolutely. So the every recipe in Simple Healing Food is a GAPS recipe and GAPS is absolutely the diet to resolve Crohn's disease. So in our clinic, we work with probably, yeah, the sickest of sick people. So when GAPS has such a reputation at being such a difficult diet to follow, the truth is it's not. It's mm -hmm. about the way people approach it because they do that diet starts Monday approach to it rather than the one step at a time. So when we work with people in the clinic, they say to us, oh, this is way easier than I thought it would be. This is not how I thought it was. Um, because of the approach we take to it. But we do, because GAPS has that reputation, it's generally like down the line of last resort, resorts people go to when they have it, um, gut issues going on. So we work with some really sick people in the clinic with lots of um, it, uh, inflammatory bowel diseases, um, Crohn's being one of them and others um, like ulcerative colitis and diverticulitis and things like that as well. And we see absolutely incredible results with those. Um, so I have one of my clients. I wouldn't be surprised if she's actually on here watching. Um, and if she is, she'll put a hand up and say so because she's the worst um, inflammatory bowel, bowel disease case that I've worked with. Um, she was so bad. She was flaring on the on the strongest medications you could possibly be on, and she was still flaring every day. And she is now on no medications, Ooh. no signs of disease, That's eating um, eating so many foods now, and just absolutely incredible. So it is amazing the power of simple healing foods. Did you see someone asked about gut health and hormonal imbalance? What's the link? Yes. Is there a link? Big, yeah. big impact on um, hormones. Lots of the 
building blocks of hormones and made in the gut and also how the gut's functioning affects how the liver is functioning that's very important in hormone health because we rely on our liver to detox things including byproducts of hormone production if our liver's not functioning well we get a real backlog of hormones that just keep recycling through the body so yes big big impact we work with lots of hormone issues as well and see amazing results there too um, yes, it is a frog croaking in the background. <laughs> Someone asked about our frogs, our Mullenbimby frogs. Um, so uh, someone, one of my details, it was at Elise Nutritionist and at Well Belly Health Clinic. And if you, clinic. if got, you look in the one. cookbook, you'll see her details yeah. there. But so if you don't okay. have the cookbook and um, you need to message and ask, you can. I can let you know. Cool. Um, is the gut house formula good for a brand new person? It yes. is good for a brand new person. If you mean a brand new person like a newborn baby, then no. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late, though. It's, it's getting, getting late. late. She's going to start popping out the dad jokes now. Watch out. I'm solid on the dad jokes. Puns um, and dad jokes. So, but it, it, in saying that, though, it is good for newborns, as in, if you know. Yes. Anyway. Uh, Someone asked about the Zazen yeah. filter. Um, is good for a brand new person because oh, we, um, it's very simple. So like the book. Sorry, were you finished? <laughs> I interrupted before. Um, someone asked about the Zazen filter. Absolutely mm -hmm. love it. It filters all the bad stuff out, but it also puts the good stuff back in because it remineralizes. Um, so it's got mineral stones in the bottom and you can buy it from my website and I have a 10% discount code, which I can give you. It's QC water 10. But if you can't remember, just message me later. Um, if any of you are wanting to know more about the gut health formula, we do um, have a seminar coming up just about gut health, don't we? Do you remember Sweet what date that is? <laughs> uh, the 3rd of February. Okay, so we'll send that out via email and you'll see it on the social media as well. Um, and in that seminar, Elise does a really good overall view of gut health and then dives into answering those kind of questions like you guys are asking. And um, you can basically ask all your gut health questions on there and it goes for a couple of hours. Um, and then if you want to um, get that really individual help, well, in a group, but get a lot of help and support with working through your gut health, um, we would recommend the gut health formula. The seminar's free, by the way, and that will be on the 3rd of February, but we'll let you know. Yep. Um, where am I based? I, I'm in Mullumbimby, but my clinic's based online and we have multiple practitioners, um, all very, very experienced, fantastic practitioners. So we are all online. <clears throat> um, someone asked how much sweet potato is okay to eat in terms of gut health. If you're doing gaps, you won't be eating sweet potato because of the starch in there. Um, that's only for a period of time during gut healing. Gut sweet potato is good for your gut health when your gut health is in a good place. Um, so it's just like when you have a broken leg, you can't run. Um, when you're trying to repair your gut, there's certain things you keep out. But running is good once your leg is good. Sweet potato is good once your gut is good. Um, what, do, what does the yeast flakes do? The fact that you can use parmesan instead. Some people can't have parmesan because it's dairy. So Joe will like use nutritional yeast as an alternate alternative to dairy, but also nutritional yeast has, it's a complete protein. Uh, it's got big vitamins. It's also good for your white blood cells, um, which is part of your immune system. So it's a nutritious food as well. And it's yummy. Mm. Um, and then there was a couple of others. Um, would gaps have a positive impact on fatty liver? Yes. So we, again, have worked with a lot of people with fatty liver um, in the clinic and there's a few things that we do to really support the liver. But yes, definitely. So it's about getting everything functioning properly. Um, can gaps help with improving uh, blood sugar control and also reducing candida? Yes, definitely. Um, so the good thing about gaps and like all the recipes in this book because they are all gaps recipes so even if you just get this book and you start making those recipes and, the, and they start kind of taking over that you're like oh we're mostly eating from this book now then you can be like well i'm pretty much doing full gaps mm. um it is about fueling the body in the best way you possibly can so anything you would write here and ask me if it helps with it 
I, the only thing I'd say no to is like your gardening or something. Like anything to do with <laughs> Yeah, body. no, because you're adding yeah. the compost from all those vegetables to your garden. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so um, it's, yes, anything going on in your system, it is going to help. And the range of issues we've worked with in the clinic mm. is huge. Um, Kirsty says, I find that nutritional yeast gives me migraines. I bet it's fortified and you're not tolerating folic acid. Um, so folic acid is an inactive form of folate and a lot of people don't tolerate it. So that's why I say no fortified nutritional yeast. You need to get the unfortified one. You need to specifically find one that says it's not fortified or it will be fortified. Someone did um, mention a brand. Someone mentioned a brand before. Did you see that? I think it was yeah. Sari Whole, or... Yeah. I, don't um, I don't know. I didn't see the brand, but Whole Food Pantry is the brand I use. Okay, yeah, that one I've seen. That one's pretty mm -hmm. common in health food stores. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, Rebecca's had it. Gaps help her hormones. Um, yes, you can lose weight on that if that's what your body is needing to do. Um, is Gaps recommended after bowel cancer? I would say to chat with a practitioner to talk to through specific issues like that. But yes, it's eating good whole foods. Um, so <laughs> there wouldn't be a no to that. Um, there, there was some you can cook classes like these online often this has motivated me to actually cook joe does them all the time okay i do monthly <laughs> workshops cooking workshops i haven't got one booked for january because i'm having a slow month yeah, but, but you can still buy your old ones too you can still buy all my old ones because they're all replays up on my website look at the tab at the top of the website and click on workshops yeah um is gut health formula okay for breastfeeding yes it is oh, better get that definitely uh... Gaps is good if you don't cope with starchy food. Yes, there's no starchy foods in Gaps. Um, oh, and when Elise and Joe run a workshop together, it's amazing. Thank Aww. you. We'll have to do another one soon. But join the gut health formula because then we're there together all the time. That's right. And we did um, the fermenting workshop together, which is, yes. that would still be up on That's your website. Up. Yeah, you can yeah. still buy that. So it doesn't have, it's a Christmas fermenting workshop, but you don't have to ferment for Christmas. You can ferment for, and for any reason. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Um, we probably will have more gut health questions, but we can, um, I can answer some of those later by typing in the comments. Um, but don't forget there is the seminar with Elise where we can really dive into all that and I'll send you the details to that. Um, I will go ahead and take you off this section here <laughs> and go Bye, back to everybody. Oh, yes, thank you so much, Elise. Um, That's okay. I'm just going to move this back over here. My my um, amazing technical. Um... <laughs> oh dear. All right. So what we're going to do now is just answer a few more questions that I had um sent in that i promised to answer so i will quickly do that and then whoopsie they're all saying goodbye to you elise you can see that can't you um <laughs> all right so i had a question from someone who asked um how long does it take to see a positive change when you switch over to a healing food diet um and she said that she'd heard that it took about eight to ten weeks Honestly, we saw changes within the first week. Um, within two weeks, you, you will see changes within a few days. Right, Elise? Elise told me that before too because she works with people all the time with major health issues. Um, there's always going to be small changes straight away and then there's long-term changes um, as you continue and you are persistent in working on your health, you will see the bigger changes. Um, so... For us, like my um, sneezy kind of hay fever stuff really calmed down quickly, but my dairy intolerance took a year. So it's plugging away step by step. You'll see small changes all along the way, and sometimes you'll see huge changes really quickly, and then there'll be things that take longer. So it really does depend um, on what health issues you have. Um, Vanessa asked, can you use meat stocks as a base for the slow cooker meals or is it best not to recook them for a long time? Um, yes, you definitely can use meat stock as a um, basis for um, your meals and that's what we do because you 
still get a lot of goodness from them when you're recooking them in another meal and you get that beautiful layer of flavor and that's what they do in traditional cooking if you go um, you know study French cooking they use beautiful stocks as bases um, to get that flavor and it also is very nutritious um, the thought of cooking several meals a night to satisfy everyone is stressful my question is um, is it all or nothing to start healing can I make small changes okay so Elise answered that it's not all or nothing it's small changes it's adding in before you take out um, in my family I'll do say a big pot of stew and some of the family will have it with rice and some won't depending on where they're at and what they're eating um, you can you can usually do a main meal that a main dish that suits everyone and then have side dishes to um, bulk it out for different people and that's usually what I did when we needed to have different things um, how can I find energy foods on a low carb diet high fat helps you to have more energy um, this is something that Elise will probably explain better than me but um, basically if you really start getting in those really nutrient dense foods um, and good fats um, egg yolks um, butter, ghee, coconut oil, olive oil, um, pate, organ meats, um, all of these really nutrient dense foods that are, um, are rich in protein and fat, um, that will help you to be satiated and you will start to find that you don't need to eat as much and you will especially find that um, when you eat carbs, you kind of crash again. So I find it really helpful to reduce the carbs and um, depending on, you know, it'll be different for everyone, but if you want to reduce carbs, you need to increase the fats. Um, we also have someone asking about, let's see, um, whether rice is good or bad for you. Um, all of those kind of questions, like Elise said, it's not about whether a food is good or bad. It's if it's a whole food, um, in its natural form, it's a good food, but it may not be the right time or you may not be able to handle that food right now, um, depending on where you're at on your healing journey. So if you're working on healing the gut, um, it's best to really pull back on the starchy foods, including rice, potatoes, sweet potato, even though they're healthy foods, because um, they start, the starches feed the bacteria and that includes the um, bacteria that are causing you problems and so as you heal then you can bring those back in um, Bernadette wants to know about the white sauce in the salmon casserole she said it's split and curdled okay so because I'm not using starches in these recipes when you make a white sauce it does explain in the recipe what it will look like it won't look silky smooth um, like a white sauce with corn flour or tapioca starch because I'm using um, gelatin to, to, to set the sauce. As it cools, it will look a little bit curdled, but then you just whisk it up again and it will be smooth. Um, and as it cools, it, gets, it stays smooth. But I find I just go ahead and make it, whiz it up and pour it straight over the casserole and don't worry if it looks a little bit curdly because when it cooks, it honestly doesn't matter. So if you are not on a gut healing diet and you just bought this book because you want some healthy recipes, you can use tapioca starch instead of the gelatin in the white sauce, um, or you know that, that will give you more of a traditional white sauce texture. But honestly, if you just whisk it again, it will come back to, together. Um, Sharon asks the best way to preserve or ferment cucumbers to tell the truth, I haven't really had much luck with cucumbers and I discussed this with Gretty, who is in this chat group and we both agreed that they're hard. <laughs> I find that they go a little bit mushy for me when I ferment them. Do you, Elise? Yeah. Um, there's tricks. There's like getting tannins in the solution, you know, blah. But you know what I did the other day, the other week, which is absolutely amazing. If you can get your hands on daikon radish, those really big white radishes, cut them into spears that are about the size of pickles um, and ferment those. Oh, okay, thanks Elise. So the little cucumbers works better. Um, ferment the, um, the daikon radish in strips like a pickle size 
in a brine, a salt brine, with a bit of dill. They stay crunchy and they taste like pickles. They're so good. So that's my new pickle. <laughs> um, coconut yogurt, someone asked about why not to use raw honey when you're making yogurt. And the reason for that is that honey works as the sugar to kickstart the fermentation in coconut yogurt, but raw honey may have an antibiotic effect and is therefore not recommended for making yogurt. So that's why you use like a, um, just a pasteurized honey. And um, Janine asked about gluten-free flour. What flour do I use? In this book, you won't find any gluten-free flour because it's based on starchy flours. So instead of gluten-free flour, I'm using almond meal, coconut flour, nut meals, um, and even vegetables and um, seeds. Okay, I think that's most of the questions. There may be a few more. Does anyone have any other questions um, or anything that you want to ask about the book or anything? I will be going through and checking the chat later or maybe tomorrow, to be honest, um, and checking if there's anything I missed. So if I did miss your question, I'm sorry, but I will try to answer. And you can also definitely feel free to email me at help at quirkycooking.com.au if you have a question that was missed. I'm happy to answer by email. I'm also happy to answer by message, um, private message on Instagram, Joe Witten or on the Quirky Cooking Facebook page. Um, I answer those every day. So, oh, oh my goodness, I nearly forgot to show you the food. <laughs> okay. There's the mushrooms. Okay, you can see those are, um, they kind of flatten out like a little pizza and they're really crispy. So that's really crispy and crunchy. Yum. And here's the rustic fruit tart. I'm gonna have to move it back here so that you can see it properly without the light messing it up. So there you go, that is delicious, hot or cold. I drizzle it with cream. Um, you could put yogurt or a bit of homemade ice cream on there, Russian custard, um, or just eat it on its own. But it is so, so yummy. As you can see, there was a bit of a blowout on the side, but <laughs> it's rustic. It's meant to be like that. So I highly recommend making this. You'll get, you probably will already have the email. Oh no, in half an hour, the email will arrive in your inbox with the recipes. If you can't find the inbox, I mean, if you, sorry, if you can't find the email, make sure you search Quirky Cooking in your spam and promotions folders because those little emails are very sneaky and they like getting into spam folders. All right. Um, oh, you're on your way. Awesome. Come and eat with me. We'll have a cuppa. If you guys want to cook with me in my kitchen, like um, someone said, a few people said the workshops are definitely a lot of fun. And if you're even in my area, um, I'm always happy to have a few people in my kitchen live um, when I do the workshops. So you're welcome to book in. Um, I also wanted to make sure that you all know um, that there is a 10% discount coming in your email for my online store. So pop in and have a look. Um, there will also, that will only be lasting for one week. So make sure you make the most of that. If you have any more questions for Elise or myself, um, Elise, remember she's on Instagram, Elise Nutritionist. Um, feel free to ask us your questions. And um, yeah, it was so lovely of you all to come and join me for my book launch. It's kind of an odd book launch this time, um, doing this at home, but I hope it's been fun. Um, I live in far north Queensland, up on the Atherton Tablelands, west of Cairns, so way up at the top of Australia. If you're up visiting, come say hi. I have an office in town, you can pop by, <laughs> come for a cuppa. And um, yeah, if you've got any more questions about the book or, oh, I did mean to tell you that you can also buy signed copies online um, on the website. We can send you the link if you want a signed copy. And we also are doing a book bundle with this book and Life Changing Food with $5 off when you buy the two together, plus you've got your 10% discount. So, um, oh, somebody asked about when my metal spatula is going to be available. 
Well, <laughs> if anyone knows a good stainless steel manufacturer, please send them to me because the one that we have is taking a very long time to get back to us. <laughs> uh, but we will get there eventually. Thank you again, everybody. It's been so lovely. Jenny, hello. Um, Jenny, we are working on getting a distributor in the UK. So hopefully it won't be much longer and um, we'll have that sorted out because we do have quite a few people in the UK wanting the book. Um, so yeah, if you have a good distributor, Jenny, pass them on to me. <laughs> um, if any of you are in the UK, you probably already know Jenny Tishi, but she has some amazing cookbooks over there too. All right, thank you guys. And yes, keeping it real as always, um, pop in and say hi on Instagram and Facebook and we will see you on there soon. All right. Oh, someone wants to know what dish I use for baking the rustic tart. It was a pizza tray, <laughs> um, just a really old one that's gotten black in the oven. All right, if you've got any more questions, I will check them later. Thanks again, guys, and um, I really appreciate your support and thanks for being part of the quirky cooking community. Bye. Bye, Elise. <laughs>